time because of its uh, less complexity but uh, as a tester you can learn it very easily because if you already have the testing mindset which is uh, very much the requirement of a chaos engineering domain and also the main major requirement are some technologies because this is a new generation uh, tool or we can say testing uh, uh testing domain and that's why it requires little bit of knowledge in the new generation technologies like for example you need to have a little bit of a good knowledge in kubernetes you need to have a little bit good knowledge in dockers uh you need to have a, a little good good knowledge in on mainly the cloud okay the cloud technologies like what is auto scaling load balancers and all those stuff so <laughs> now <clears throat> so that's what in this course we cover okay so as a chaos engineer like what all is required like for example uh, this is a very new domain right so you need to be very good at the planning once uh, you are good at the planning uh, you need to be very good at um, <clears throat> how you can implement chaos engineering in your uh, uh, development life cycle or we can say the total uh, life cycle of your application and how you can uh, like what are the tools which you need like for example here in this course we are totally focusing on uh, majorly focusing on two tool, two tools one is the open source tool uh, which is chaos toolkit and second we are seeing more widely is the gremlin because gremlin is the only tool reliable paid tool available in the market for chaos engineering uh, that's why it is also booming with time okay so uh, having knowledge in that tool gives you a very big edge over others uh, because many organization is implementing chaos engineering nowadays especially those who are on to cloud okay so um, the uh, projects which are on premise or we can say who are not on cloud they might not be uh, going into chaos engineering very quickly but surely they will have a technology transformation sometime right so that time surely they will right but the people or the projects who are already on the cloud they will surely implement chaos engineering because it's a need of this uh, time okay because we will see all those why uh, it's a need and why why this sudden uh, growth in uh, chaos engineering and why every organization is looking for a chaos tester okay right so now if you speak about the course content okay just to go over it and uh, obviously for whom this course is uh, or as it is for generally uh, the pers people from the testing domain uh, even the development domain who want to grow uh, into an sre role uh, for them and also for people who like for example you are a performance engineer and you want to upskill yourself with a with one more technology right uh, that way you will have an edge over the interviews or growing you know, making your career more valuable to others so in for them also this course is there right so basically see if you see this course like what you will learn from this course okay if i put all uh, the whole course uh, in a nutshell like uh, what you will learn okay so if we see the course the tools which you will learn is very wide okay because see as i said this is a new generation domain right so first of all you will widely learn about the cloud okay so cloud like for example here in this course we might use google cloud or aws so you will learn like how the cloud like though the name changes what are the common things in the cloud like for example if you take google cloud or aws or azure all three have some common similarities okay so you will try you will learn that also and also what are the differences if any in these cloud okay and second we will learn some new generation technologies like what is uh, kubernetes its functional it's how do they function how you install kubernetes how you run the agent uh, how you set up a cluster and all those then we, we do in this when you are learning kubernetes you will learn docker you will learn what are containers what are pods those are uh, things also you will learn as you progress third obviously you will learn a lot on the chaos tools right mainly as i said you will learn what is gremlin what is chaos toolkit uh, then see nowadays the world is running behind automation right so without automation things won't end so that's why we will also be looking into Jenkins pipeline, 
will we will do a we will add a chaos engineering pipeline to our uh, jenkins a job okay like how you run a jenkins job how you write a pipeline code uh, small code so it is since i uh, like we don't have a very deep uh, we are not learning jenkins in deep we will not go that deep i will say but yes you will obviously learn how to install jenkins how to run a pipeline okay so those things so in this way what you are getting is not only the chaos engineering domain knowledge but also some to other tools knowledge also which you can apply in your current uh, uh, performance engineering also like for example if you are good at kubernetes you can do a better analysis in performance engineering by knowing kubernetes because the same analysis is what we are learning in chaos engineering also but the main difference is the objective because in performance engineering we are we our objective is response time stability load right in chaos engineering our objective is more on the recovery side how the system is recovering well or not how, how the user experience is so that's the objectives which is changing but what we analyze the metrics which we collect and all pretty much we collect what is required for performance engineering also right so that's that way you will be up uh, you will have an extra edge over analysis also right so if i go with the modules the module one is basically a chaos engineering introductory module where you will learn little bit on the chaos engineering what uh, what is chaos engineering the principles and the process which you follow in chaos engineering and what are the activities as a chaos engineer uh, generally like you will perform okay and what are the prerequisites for uh, chaos engineering that is again uh, uh, something which you will learn the limitations and all then we will do some practical hands on on breaking a system planning your experiments and all uh, then how you inject a cpu chaos so that we will see then chaos engineering we will again then we will start our experiments and all we will go from one to the next but we will see what's a game day um, how you run an experiment using tools like gremlin chaos toolkit then monitoring and capturing metrics then we will see gremlin uh, then even the system and applications we will see like what are the uh, different uh, uh, like how you analyze how you do attacks on different containers docker using docker and how you uh, have a, if you have a kubernetes cluster how you attack the system uh, then how uh, you try to analyze it how you improve your system as a chaos engineer and something related to the databases also like how generally chaos engineering happens in the databases and how you analyze it then obviously we have the automation part we will be seeing the jenkins ci cd pipelines how you use gremlin apis to integrate it with J jmeter which is which is very interesting as a performance engineer it will be very useful for you because um, this will be more sort of hybridizing or combining both performance engineering and chaos engineering into single script of jmeter okay so how you do that okay so this will be really interesting okay we will see that uh, then shifting chaos to the left what because everyone is speaking shift left shift left right we will see what is shift left and how you shift your chaos to the left um, even that and some future potentials uh, which we will uh, try to uncover uh, yeah so any question anyone till now uh, sir one question regarding gremlin tool because so, so sir, uh, so Gremlin tool is the paid version. Is there any uh, free tier version for that? How we are going to use that tool to do the experiment? Correct. So that's a very good question, Mayank. So basically, for the uh, Gremlin has different uh, licenses. So there is a free trial license which Gremlin provides, uh, which is basically the limitation. There is only the number of CPUs which you can attack only two cpus you can attack uh, using the free trial license but all other functionalities will be available for you to test and understand uh, what it is and all so is there That's... any timeline for that free trial or we can use uh, for longer duration as well with yeah there or is free, free, free there is some i think 15 days, uh, 15 days uh, trial, to yeah. and to an year, year because actually how that free trial happens is you fill a form and send to them and they send you the credentials it happens that way it's not that you uh, it's not like other tools where you go directly um, and uh, the trial is available so it's around 15 days to an year i don't remember they will be giving it as per the requirement and for our course uh, specifically as i am uh, like i am into this chaos engineering and i am very close to gremlin so they have given me an enterprise license free license so i will be adding all you all to that for maybe one month uh, 
because I, the problem is I can't keep on adding each batch uh, and keep it for longer duration. So uh, if you require later on also, you can ask me, I can add you back maybe for 10 days or 15 days more again. Uh, so it's in that way, you can have a uh, good uh, like uh, trial over the enterprise license, how it, uh, how it works. So there we don't have even the limitation of CPU targets also. So yeah, so that I will be giving access to all of you. Uh, got it, Mike? What I meant? Uh, yes, sir. And I'm not yeah. asking about any functionality that why chaos engineering is how is different from the resilience and the failover. But you are going to cover in the subsequent session. Then I'll ask question if I have. Yes, yes, yes. You you can ask that time also, but quickly now I will answer that. Okay, only like uh, small in a brief, but we will be going in very deep. So that time you will get more understanding. So see, failover testing is more about how your system will withstand any failure. Okay, so if you put it in two three words, that's what failover testing is all about. So how will your system withstand any failures? But if you see the chaos engineering domain or activity there, here the objective remains very clear that it's not about withstanding any failure, it's about the recovery, right? So how well your system will recover, how fast, how well, and how how much uh, uh, like impact that failure has caused. Like for example, if you have an incident in production, uh, how much loss you made through money or good customer goodwill. So it's a very huge uh, loss, right? So you are as a chaos, chaos engineer going to, um, your main objective is to reduce that. So how your system should recover very fast. That's one objective, main objective, which you, you are, will be focusing chaos engineering, not the withstand. See, failures will occur. That's what is the first principle which we believe as a chaos engineer. We never say fa failure will not occur and your system will be able to withstand any failure. We are saying that failure will occur. But how fast you will recover from that, how well your team will respond to that, and how what are the fixes to that? Okay, so that's what as, as a chaos engineer, you will uh, try to f do. And also you will simulate the issues. Simulate means like you will not wait for the issue to happen. But as a chaos engineer, you will create that issues and you will fix it. So we are going to see that. Is it clear, man? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Vishnu, here okay. you say withstand, right? So mm -hmm. withstand in the sense of what? How is it? How, how it happens? Yeah, so we stand in sense uh, in failover testing. See, uh, when you are doing some failover testing, for example, if you are bringing down a whole, um, like uh, if you're bringing down some nodes, okay, what they will see is whether the other two nodes are able to um, handle the load or let's say handle the traffic or handle the application functionalities. Though the non functional may be the response time might shoot or something, the uh, but yes, what well, the main thing here is uh, they will be looking for how your system is withstanding any failure. Like, you there shouldn't be any, there shouldn't be any uh, block in their business transactions. That's what. So, the business transaction should go on in the back end without any problem. But here in the chaos engineering, we are not looking for like we here our objective is not fixing that because obviously 100 percent incidents are happening failures are happening though failover testing is there already okay because uh, all you would have seen like outages are happening in production so that that outages is what we are focusing here we have to reduce that outages so why these outages are happening we will see as we progress in the course what are the causes of those outages why it is becoming very complex with time uh, and why we require one more domain to test it because other domains are not able to capture it okay so that we will see like uh, specifically um yeah so yeah that's a uh, uh, so in, is it uh am i answering yeah, 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 and understand yeah so you mean to say the failover and find kind of a ha test right correct yes okay. Okay. Yeah. So you said you are going to do this uh, chaos using a j meter or something right yeah. So it's, uh, yeah. So basically, see, chaos engineering. Uh, once we complete, but but this J meter part will be maybe around a one session, around one hour session maybe. So it will be more sort of uh, how you integrate J meter. Uh, sorry, uh, any tool we can say, not only J meter. So here specifically, the audience which I used to get are from performance background and also I specifically picked J meter 
so jmeter you can integrate jmeter with gremlin so how you do that and you can run your chaos experiment using jmeter so that's what i will be focusing there with your okay. performance uh, test with your okay. performance test together basically basically yeah. using a jmeter script maybe api or web mm-hmm. script just you are going yeah. to oh, while you are running the jmeter test you are going to attack again maybe the cpu attack from the gremlin too right no 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 from jmeter everything i will not use gremlin okay. there Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So from JMeter, I, I, what I meant is I, I am not using Gremlin in sense. I will not go to Gremlin tool, but Gremlin mm-hmm. I will be using using JMeter only in the JMeter script itself. Oh. How you do that? That's what we will learn. Okay. Gosh. Yeah. yeah. So Basically, so you will have only one script. You will have only one yeah. script. Okay. Uh, so you run the script, both chaos engineering uh, test and also the performance engineering test will run together. That's what that activity is all about. Yeah, go ahead, Mayank. So, is there any plan uh, no, to sorry. do the similar uh, thing? Because he is raising okay. hand from okay, some okay. time. No, sure. Yeah. No, sure. Go ahead, Tafi. Yes, uh, my question is you mentioned you're going to be demonstrating on GCP and AWS. Are you by any chance also going to be showing um, some of of the activities in Azure? Actually, the thing is, uh, I will be creating the free trial account in any one only. So, but okay. only thing what I meant is, I whenever there is a difference, like for example, Google Cloud, there is Compute Engine, AWS, there is EC2 instance. So things, sure. but remain same other things. Like for example, you go to Compute Engine, you do something, EC2, you go and you do something, but the names have, have changed. That's sure, all. Sure. So what I will be calling out is, for example, if I use Google Cloud, I will call out like, okay, in AWS, you have to go here and do this. So in that way, I can do. Uh, yeah. so, Sounds yeah, good. Yeah. My question is, yes. so when you do that, can you also mm-hmm. mention Azure as well? Whatever you, you sure, use, sure. is not a problem yeah. for me. Because in my company, yeah. you know, we are using, we're just moving to Azure. And okay. I'm pretty mm-hmm. familiar with Azure. I don't know AWS. So that would help me out. Sure, sure. I will. Oh, I will. Um, I can do one thing like what all I take in Google Cloud. I can uh, maybe take a session, a small 15 to 20 minute session, to show you all of you what all the similarities are there in all three of these, like AWS, Sounds Azure, good. and Google Cloud. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Stuffing. Yeah, Mayank, go ahead. So, uh, instead of uh, apart from the JMeter, so um, can you show that how to run the test? From the load runner as well using Gremlin because you are going to. Um, it's very simple, test- Mike. You you will you will understand it easily. Load runner okay. it will be very quick. Yeah, yeah. Because see, okay. it's more sort of how you convert JMeter script to load runner script that you know, no. Yep. Right. Yeah, yes. it's similar to that only. It's not a very okay. big deal. Okay, it's again like a, a basic script uh, which you can easily import to load runner if you know both. Okay. JMeter okay. and load runner. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because why I'm not saying I why I'm not committing that I will show you in load on it is because our time might uh, get exhausted. So if I say now I can show it, but yeah, but it's not. Uh, I don't know whether I, it will be possible with all this because I, there is a lot of content which we need to cover. Uh, as you see, right? Like what all components we are covering here in this course, and uh, that's why uh, adding one more tool might be difficult. Let's see, Mayank, if time permits. Total, how many hours course, Vishnu? Is this 20 hours? So I am planning around 20 to 22 hours of course. Uh, okay. So yeah, every day if we say one hour, it will run for around 20 working days. Okay. But yeah, we can finish it early also. Maybe if all all the audience are okay, we can take some Saturdays, maybe three, two, three, four hours. In that way, we can save four days. So. Yeah, that's again based, uh, totally based on the audience. If they are okay with it, uh, the flexibility, uh, which we will discuss as we start the real sessions. No, once the demo is. Yeah, yeah, done. yeah. When are we planning to uh, start that? Because the last time also I was saying, so I think some delay was happened. So are we planning? Yeah, yeah. So happen? correct. No, no. This we have started. Today is the demo. It, now it will continue. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, uh, like uh, yeah. So tomorrow we will have the first day one. So it will be continuing. Yeah, the timing is same, right? Same, same. Timing. No changes okay. in the timing this time, yes. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> right. So, any other question? Uh, Megha, Madan, Rajkumar. 
No, it's not. I'm good. Yeah, thank you. Raja? <coughs> Sir, will you be providing any documentation as well? I was in so basically uh, yeah we will I will be providing a Google Drive link uh, there you will have a lot, uh, all the materials which I am sharing even the PPTs the documents and all and also you will have different codes like for example I will show you some things uh, which you might not understand what it is now but later on it will be clear so this whole folder I will share with you all this chaos engineering folder so here you will have a lot of materials where you will have the module all the modules like for example if i show module one which you will start uh, today uh, probably so we will have the introductory modules uh, then we will have different modules like for example module three is a very important module where we will be doing a lot of hands-on with different tools uh, different uh, cloud resources so very lot of hands-on is there here in Q, uh, module three so generally what I do is uh, with module one, module two and module four, I, I combine module three also because uh, to make it not boring, like lot of theory. So what I do is I try to bring the module three uh, in between module one, module two and module four also. So that we by, by the end, when we finish, we will have, let's say, 25% of the theory and 75% uh, of practicals will finish uh, parallelly. Not that we finish the 25% theory initially itself. Uh, so we, I just try to make it in that way. So, sir, so are you, yeah, yeah. Uh, so while you are doing the practical, so are we doing in parallel with you or how you are going to plan? Because I remember. Your choice. Last... Uh, yeah, yeah. That's your choice basically because uh, I will give you ample time uh, between each steps when I do. Uh, but if sometimes like see it's more I have seen like it's a morning time some come with mobile uh, some join with mobile and all so later on also you can go through the recordings and uh, come back to me with questions uh, okay. but it's always good to do it with me because uh, you can easily clear your queries that time itself right so yeah but uh, I will not wait too much for that because uh, since our time is uh, limited so you can do it with me also my not an issue but you need to be a little quick. I meant as you as I do, you need all need to also uh, match up with okay. my speed. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah. So this I will share. And also see there are a lot of scripts also. For example, this Jenkins pipeline script, which we will be using example script. So you will learn how you uh, write a pipeline script, which is nowadays very, uh, very, very common thing people are doing. OK, so you will learn how to write a Jenkins pipeline script, then uh, just to show you quickly okay what all how to install a docker then um, there are a lot of things which you will do like for example how you there are different commands like kubernetes some ports like see there are different ports in the kubernetes so which are those ports you need to open what are the importance of each of these ports what are these components uh, of kubernetes how what is a kubernetes overall okay that also uh, so there are a lot of things these all these materials i'll share with you all this is all from my experience, which I have uh, which I have created, uh, which will be useful for you all. Uh, just uh, collated and combined to one single folder. So yeah, it will be useful for you. I will share with all of you. Even there's a tool evaluation checklist. Like if you're implementing some new tool, uh, this checklist will be useful for you uh, later on. <clears throat> yeah. So yes, I will share this all with you all. And uh, any so other questions? I have, I have yeah. one question. So nowadays I'm hearing this here. There's a rule called SRE, Site Reliability Engineer, something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it is yeah. something related to this or how far? Correct, correct. Yes. So see, as a SRE, there are some uh, three predefined, I can say, uh, uh, function requirements. Okay. 
one is you should have good knowledge in the new generation technologies like kubernetes docker cloud uh, and more sort of a uh, little bit of development language okay maybe some python or java some development language you need to know to become an sre okay second is you need to widely you need to be very much uh, widely know what is chaos engineering okay so these are the two important we can say requirements to become an sre so the main thing is that if you don't have the development knowledge uh, i mean the language knowledge python or java some language knowledge you what you can do is you can become a chaos engineer sre becomes little difficult okay because if uh, without zero development knowledge it's little difficult to become an sre but chaos engineer you can easily become like performance engineer with chaos engineering so uh, it becomes a uh, uh, like you will be remaining in the testing or the engineering domain only but if you want to grow to an sre fully capable sre you need to have a bit of a development knowledge i meant language knowledge like python or java some knowledge you need to have with chaos engineering hmm. yeah so basically see now what is happening is uh, whenever i we take interviews okay uh, or like whenever any any organization nowadays they are taking interviews they are especially since chaos engineering is also more sort of very close to a non functional testing domain um, performance engineers who have chaos engineering have a very edge over interviews because as soon as they speak about gremlin as soon as they say we have experience uh, in doing some chaos experiments in our project uh, we get more excited to know about them okay like what are their knowledge what all they did and it gives a very big edge over uh, what they what uh, they are looking for so that's a main important i will say um uh, like it's more sort of plum on the cake okay so chaos engineering at alone you maybe it might not fetch you any job but uh, with something if you add chaos engineering it will fetch you that job very easily okay so people are looking for switching and people who are want to grow grow the career and all it's very useful okay currently and nowadays the competition is also not that high because people who know chaos engineering has very few okay if you see the online also the content for chaos engineering is also very scattered okay you will not find a very well organized content or a person uh, who is explaining everything in an organized manner okay so yeah so that's what like the, for the people who are uh, having a doubt like where this will fit in okay that's where the main i will fit this uh, course into i will not say you as soon as you do chaos engineering you will become an sre no to become an sre you will have to have a development knowledge but yes chaos engineering will all act like a boost to your career that is that i'm sure okay. so basically when it comes to the experiments right see yeah, when yeah. i was doing this googling and all the basic correct, experiments correct. what we do is mm -hmm. see on cpu memory correct. network mm -hmm. latency throughput or correct. deleting a part adding a part or something these generic uh, generic uh, typical uh, experiments apart from that in real time if you applications mm. are in, really in cloud so are we doing any, any something different than regular attacks do we have any plans yeah so see, okay uh so see now let's say let's say you say uh, you as you correctly pointed out let's say you, we are bringing down the cpu but uh, bringing down the cpu okay you can do it manually also right you don't need a tool to do that so when you or let's say if i want to create let's say we say in terms of performance okay i can generate traffic using some basic code also i don't need load runner jmeter to create the traffic right yeah. maybe i will say gremlin can create the traffic okay so how how a load runner will be different from gremlin or how the uh, what do you think sri as any guess like the same traffic okay. or the same same thing i can do with gremlin also mm -hmm. right so yeah. uh let's say if someone asks you this question okay so wh why we use load runner we can use gremlin by one click i can create the traffic okay i don't need any license also like even one lakh users i can hit mm -hmm. yeah see so yeah, what, what, is, what uh, oh, no, 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 no. obviously this tool definitely this tool is meant for this uh, doing experiments so what i'm asking mm -hmm. is apart from this basic experiments are yeah. going to cover any any real time like uh, i don't know how 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 can put it in words so, yeah so i got your question that's where i'm coming to what i'm i'm basically trying to uh, come to is like the basic things which you are saying no they have very lot of complexities in the background 
that's what we are going to learn like how you will analyze those basic things because see a basic memory attack can create a lot of problems in the pods in the back end okay so how you analyze those pods what what configuration you need to change in the pods to uh, to avoid those issues so that's what is the real chaos engineering is happening right the filling of the memory or hitting the cpu you there will be multiple tools to do that okay so here uh, the main objective is not the tools or the experiments which you run but ultimately the fix right so yeah, how you fix uh, it anything that cause root cause rca correct so and like say like cpu utilization if i hit 90% cpu utilization or 100% cpu utilization, it's not my work is not done there right i i have to analyze it like 100% cpu i done after in during that this microservice is not working okay or this microservice connection is not uh, or is timing out okay so what is the issue is it the load balancer timing out is it the db timing out what is it so that analysis is what we are trying to do right and we will fix it obviously we have to fix it so we will need to know like which configuration is a problem so fixing initially we might i meant we will need the architect's help and all or the develop development team help it's not that we can directly fix it but obviously we can pinpoint the issue okay. so the process to do that okay and also okay so now the experiments which you said like cpu uh, memory now let's say if i want to do these five experiments together how how can i do like a scenario okay for example uh, once uh, there is some sort of attack which i am planning okay and not only cpu even there's some dns attacks black hole attack latency attack right a lot of different attacks are there these combinations how do they work like let's say you have a latency attack and uh, with that latency attack of uh, automatically your uh, memory builds up now why does this happen anyone any guess when you have lot of latency your memory becomes your memory built up you can see like you will run out of memory sometimes in pods now why do this happen any guess anyone like how latency contributes to the memory processing of transaction will be slow because it depend on the bandwidth what bandwidth that we are processing and if the if there is no bandwidth available then it will take uh, time to process and because of that memory will shoot up correct so things like that okay so there are dependencies it's not like straightforward okay we have a latency attack we will have a timeout error no or we will have a latency attack we will have an internal server error no it doesn't happen like that there are lot of repercussions which are not imaginable okay like for example there is a connection between latency and memory or latency and cpu okay so how can we connect it so we can do it only by experiments we don't know what is expected there that's why we call it experiment 3 getting my point yeah sure. there is no expected there okay we can get anything out of it and how we like how we make it expected that's what is as a chaos engineer my objective is all about so when it goes to production i shouldn't get something out of the blue clear sri yeah yeah i understand yeah yeah okay uh yeah that's good like i am seeing lot of uh, interaction from the initial sessions itself this is good because this way uh, it becomes more interesting and uh, some new questions are, are uh, arise okay like because if i go on with my course without interaction uh, the like it does, it becomes a little monotonous okay so this way it's good uh, like from initial itself you have queries this way others can also learn now from the sri uh, from the question of sri i guess most of you would have uh, got something extra okay which uh, i maybe i wouldn't have explained today so that's how yeah, yeah. so are we covering are we okay. going to cover any kind of jms or messaging or top kind of uh, applications related queuing mm -hmm. see uh, there is like i will take some examples but i don't know i will be able to demonstrate it as a demo but i will explain mm -hmm. some cases case studies Uh, which happened okay like for example sqs like sqs is a very big trouble in aws sometimes uh, due to the failures uh, so that we will discuss like how the how chaos engineering you can model an experiment for sqs so that but that will be more sort of uh, i will i can't show you because i don't have that infra to set up that for now but i will give it from my experience from my project what i learned uh, that i will surely share this was the experiment which we done and uh, this is what we got the problem and how we fixed it 
so you will get an idea like how you model the hypothesis how you model how you write the test plan how you uh, execute the test and all experiment i will not say test but now i'm using the word test just for because we haven't entered that world of chaos engineering yet so but after this i will always be using experiment word so yeah yeah because nowadays there are different clients in different projects so everyone mm -hmm. is using it based on their business and needs and functionality architecture and all, right correct. different different correct. resources they're using but basically services maybe if we say uh, aws some people may yes. be using a <laughs> lambda some people using a different different services or less things some are using s3 rds different again different different dbs correct. based on their business correct. So now, yeah. the, apart from this container, uh, Kubernetes, all these things, right? Are we going to cover mm -hmm. any of any services, different services? Basically, the application SPS? which, correct. So basically, the demo application which we are using is using RabbitMQ. Uh, okay. But um, uh, as such, like, uh, I, as I said, like, I won't be using any service like SQS or something. Because uh, okay. uh, that infrastructure, I, I from my projects, obviously, I cannot show you due to some reasons. But I can show you the, um, like, you maybe a more sort of an imaginative way you will have to i will just yeah. explain what all we yeah in that way because in interviews right mostly they will ask mm -hmm. about these services correct, they correct. Have this yes, area, maybe sometimes they will mm -hmm. use no sql sometimes mongo db mm -hmm. someone uh, different different dbs right yeah mm -hmm. there is a very very common experiment which we do with the queues we will see that but for now just quickly like like let's say uh, there is one service like let's say some accounts microservice is there which is handling login and all and you have let's say one more service which is more sort of uh, let's say it's a point like which handles redeeming point no those service like session yeah. m or something yeah. uh, so the when your account service is going it's not available and your user is redeeming a point what happens is that point will go into this sqs queue let's say okay and mm -hmm. once your account service is back it will push it back into the db now why we require this is see this point redemption is a very important uh, part though it looks very uh, no like though the point redemption is not that profitable it will look like it's not a profitable business transaction but it's more sort of the goodwill right customer goodwill so if let's say you redeem 100 points and um, later on if your system shows uh, like out of like let's say the user had 500 points and he redeems 100 points and later on let let's say your your system shows that it ha he has only 300 points or let's say your system shows he has 500 points both are wrong right if it says 500 points it's a loss for the business if it says 300 points it's a loss of customer goodwill right so that way so now what so for this the queue has to act very properly right your queue has mm -hmm. should not leave any messages behind it has to insert everything so this testing happens in chaos engineering like you simulate it uh, you see whether there are any messages in the dead letter queue uh, like how much messages are if at all there how how much is the spillover right and how you can fix those like what was the reason why it was not inserted into the db so those analysis you do using chaos engineering so here what experiment you will run you feel generally that microservice whichever is there no we will do a black hole attack there so that there is no nothing going in and out from the microservice or even we can run some cpu attack that is also okay uh, or the memory attack so that the mi microservice doesn't react to anything what is coming to it so so this gremlin how many attacks we have maybe now in purpose if you take aws we have almost many services right even mm -hmm, correct many key mm -hmm. key services we are very correct maybe mm -hmm. 10 to 50 key services Correct. So these gremlins yes. will support all these key services, whatever we have. Yes, yeah, see, the basically it's more sort of an agent, okay. So it doesn't yes. matter which service you're using. It's an agent oh, okay. which we install and run it, okay. So attacks, if you see around 12 attacks are there in gremlin, which is more than enough, okay, like I will say. Uh, because the combination of these attacks itself will create a lot of other attacks. So okay. 12 attacks are more than enough, but there are open source tools like chaos toolkit which have more than that like uh, the driver you there's a they don't say attack they say drivers you need to install the drivers to create an attack okay but it is very complicated because chaos toolkit is more sort of python based so you need to know a little uh, there is no gui there so there are a lo lot of problem in these open source tools and they are very new there is no community to answer your question uh, so that's why people go with gremlin and generally i have seen one thing a uh, very common thing like the projects which are up, uh, really interested in doing chaos engineering they easily go with gremlin because the license is not too costly 
uh, for what the ROI they get. But ultimately, it depends on the person who is persuading the uh, client or the project, like how you can add the value. Okay, so yes. Yeah, yeah. But in my in my client project, we have applications on on prime at this mm -hmm. moment. They are they are suggesting us Mangil for doing this on prime mm -hmm. applications. For, okay. for applications which is going to cloud in AWS, they are suggesting now at this moment Kremlin. So using Mangle, we are trying to do this POC and all on on-prem applications. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have some limitations there also. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. So that's what. So it will be very useful for those who are, especially Gremlin. You will have, and I will not say see as soon as you. That's why I'm taking one open source also. Because let's say you want to do a POC and you want to show like how chaos engineering can add value to your organization. You can go with some open source tool, some basic test you can run and show them like maybe chaos monkey or chaos toolkit. Okay. But when you want to grow, you can persuade them like, okay, Gremlin is, this is how you can save a lot on the uh, technicalities and also test setup, uh, even reliability of the tool because you're doing a reliability test. And if your tool itself is not reliable, it's dangerous, right? So those yeah. way you can, yeah, those are the ways you can persuade them. Yes. Okay. Uh, so any other question? Sir, uh, one question. Mekha? Yeah, yeah my, go ahead. So suppose, sir, if any experience that you can't replicate, so do, based mm -hmm. on your experience, are you going to share any document that if that kind of experiment that we have to do, what are the steps need to follow and how we are going to fix those things? Something like that. Uh, Just for sorry, reference purpose. I didn't get your question. So suppose can you make it as mentioned, clear? Yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying that because as a mm -hmm. part of this course, you are you are not going yeah. to replicate each and everything because of some environment constraints as well. Correct? You are not going to uh, show all the types of uh, kiosk engineering or uh, using Gremlin. Correct? We can't replicate each and everything because we there is an environment setup that is required. Correct? Correct. Uh -huh. Yes. So based on your experience, suppose. If you think that okay, these experiments are also needed, there are, uh, but because of the environment constraint, we can't do it. So, do you have any okay. document, anything that you have prepared based on your experience? Okay. Yeah. So uh, I don't, I don't have any document as such like that. Uh, I understand your question now. So what I can do is when I am when I am doing these experiments, I can come across those uh, uh, test use cases if something comes at all like if we are speaking about those components and if i think okay this is also one type of case you can experiment but due to these limitations we are not able to do it now but that how we are follow. going to but how we are going to fix those things because main thing is that how we recover from those uh, correct, things correct. so if we don't so that, know to how to yeah, fix those yeah. things mm -hmm. so that's what so they, that is a place where chaos engineering is a very different domain from others okay in performance engineering if you find an issue your developer can fix it okay like maybe reduce the response time or ultimately your client will say the response time 30 seconds is acceptable because your transaction is a little heavy let's say but similar to that in chaos engineering also we have a second opinion second opinion is like the architects will say okay so my microservice is going down and uh, i'm not able to access the login so when this login is not working, we need to set up a redirect and that redirect, maybe it will redirect the user to some gaming page where they will get some offer code or coupon code by pay, playing the game. So when they play the game, my background, background, what my system will do is it will try to recover from that problem so that my user will not get, not get the feel or the heat of what happened, but automatically my system will also get time to recover. So this is some sort of solutions, not only technical. Mayank, getting my point? So these are also a sort of solution which a chaos engineer provides. See, obviously we cannot cover everything, but whatever we have in the tool, we will try to cover. Correct. Right. Okay. Yes, yes. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so what, what, like, yeah. was Mayank's question about the experiments or uh, the fixing? I think yeah, so. I when we do the experiment, know. so we are going to fix those things, correct? Correct. That's what yes. we are doing. That's what we are doing the experiment. Mm -hmm. Suppose if any experiment yes. we can't do because of environment constraint, mm -hmm. okay. So because as you mentioned that because the chaos engineering uh, knowledge we can't find everything in Google actually because in, correct. information no. is scattered, correct. correct? So based on your experience, because you are part of this chaos engineering, so based on yeah. your experience, if you just uh, mention in one of the document or excel wherever you wanted to put okay this type of issue 